Hello and happy Monday, Thursday. <clears throat> I know you've heard Monday, Monday. Can't trust that day. Well, according to the, the, the Christian myth, if you will, today's the day uh, that uh, the Last Supper was uh, uh, celebrated the day that uh, uh, Jesus was betrayed. So that's why Monday, Monday, Thursday, can't trust that day. Uh, and if you've read uh, my book, My Life with the Spirits, you know that uh, uh, I had a very... Uh, uh, hilarious in retrospect uh, uh, communion service at the Methodist Church in Columbus, Nebraska many, uh, many, many years ago when I was about 17, which is another one of my magical comedy of errors. <laughs> and I, I was uh, attempting to uh, 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 display my, my newly confirmed atheism uh, at a communion service. It, it's, a, it's a long story. I'm not going to bore you with it uh, today, but uh, th that truly is a Monday, Thursdays uh, uh, story. Uh, I, uh, I was going to call this uh, little talk that today is why, why read your mag magical diaries? Sounds like a boring subject to. Do you keep a magical diary? Do you keep a record, or or uh, or even do you save your your old calendars that uh, where you write what you're going to do during the month, and you know you have appointments and you have uh, celebrations you have and people visit and things. You write it down on the calendar, uh, even if you don't keep a formal magical diary. Uh, don't throw away the the old calendars that maybe you have it in the kitchen you you uh, fill in as the years go by because it's very it's very helpful not to forget certain things as a matter of fact memory is a very important thing in in magic uh, Crowley has a whole chapter called The Magical Memory in Magical, Magic Theory and Practice. It helps. We get so focused in our day-to-day -day bummers and our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, activities and hopes and dreams and disappointments and, and agonies and ecstasies that, that we, we lose touch sometimes with the momentum that the trajectory of our life is hurling us. So it's you can't see the forest for the trees, in other in other words. Magical diaries help you see the forest that, that you're in and uh, the trajectory of the path that you're taking. Now Usually a diary should embarrass you to read several years later or many years later because you expose yourself so much. Uh, your your ego and your wishful thinking and your, your narcissistic uh, uh, musings and things like that. Uh, you read it and go, oh, God, was I, ooh, did I think that, you know? But keeping a mag magical diary, it may start out that way, and there may be many passages that you uh, that embarrass you, and some things you may not even appreciate until fifty years later, when you review it, and all of a sudden, old bricks fall into place. that represent the foundation of who you are and what you are right now. 
plus, I'm a, I'm a Cancerian, okay, I, I have my son in Cancer. And so I'm a kind of a warm, cozy, nostalgic guy. I'm, I'm the most nostalgic guy I know. I wallow in my nostalgia. And of course, my nostalgia, uh, nostalgia is uh, uh, just my replaying in a pleasant way <laughs> what otherwise was probably uh, a very uncomfortable, very uh, uh, failure-ridden objective reality of the past. No. I can feel the warm nostalgia in in my uh, in my memories of the past. The diaries allow you to wallow in that, to indulge in that to a certain extent, but also to sort of slap you into the reality of what was going on and allow you to give yourself either good or poor marks for how you have taken advantage of or ignored the opportunity of uh, seeing those activities uh, as part of your own great work. That's where magical diaries come in. This little thing well, I've got a box of magical diaries there for uh, over many years. This is only a, a diary for about uh, six or eight months of 1989. And most of my diaries, they look really good. Okay, and they, they're beautiful little things, and I find them in stationery stores and, and bookstores and stuff. But look, out of this whole book here, all of that, is blank. Less than half I've filled up. And I've either lost interest or I've got myself another magical book or whatever. So it looks like I got about some books there, but uh, all of these diaries are probably at least a third uh, uh, incomplete. And I want to share with you a little if you will indulge me because it was a private thing at the moment. Okay. This was 1989, and it uh, really concerned a great deal of magical work that Constance and I were involved in uh, that concerned the OTO and uh, my, uh, to a certain extent, my AA career. And if you don't mind, I'd like to share it with you because I was going over it this morning while looking for something else. And uh, I got such a kick out of it that I thought uh, maybe you'd enjoy it too. Uh, especially the way this one started because I hadn't kept a diary for a few years prior to this. I'd, I'd had many diaries before, starting in like 1971, but I had given up my diary entry for a while. So this is January 27th. Okay. January 20th, 1989 EV. And there's my, my handwriting's even worse now. 4 p.m. Many years since previous diary entry. Working for Tom Sipple. That's, uh, I worked uh, at a, a stock brokerage firm, a small one. I managed it. Been working for Tom Sipple uh, one and a half years, drinking too much, money tight, life interesting within and without the OTO, Haru Raha, that's our lodge, still one of the biggest, busiest lodge, Constance and I, I call her C and I, are both seventh degrees now. Okay, yeah, I, I was uh, elevated to ninth degree in 1970, uh, whenever it was I took my, my third, but that still didn't mean that I uh, 
I uh, didn't need to take my uh, my third and my fourth and my fifth and sixth and seventh and okay in in order too. So Constance and I were both seventh degrees. I am secretary of the Supreme Grand Council, which is what it was called in those days. More or less uh, in charge of the fifth degree matters. I'm. Uh, I open and train uh, new chapters. C and I go with HB, that's Hymenaeus Beta, the, the head of the order, Frater Superior. Constance and I go with HB to England this April for f European fifth degrees. And when I read that, a flood of things I haven't thought about in decades came flooding back into my brain and new connections were made to old connections in my brain that just popped up pop, 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 pop. oh god yes okay events indicate new season of life on all planes so this new record my motto is adeo sat bene a d e o s a t B-E-N-E, -E, which means so far so good. Now, this, whether you're a magician or not, this next page blew my mind because it's a page just dedicated to best friends as follows. And on this date, that the 27th of, of January, 1989, these were my best friends. Wouldn't you like, wouldn't you like to review the list of your best friends 35 years ago? I'm going to share it with you. Some are dead and some are living. Constance is number one. Jean-Paul, number two. Steve Abbott. Leroy Lauer. Bill Breeze. Doug James. Karen James. Jane Richmond. David Wilson. Dewey Worth. Sharon Sanders, Gary Lucas, Jeff Price, <clears throat> Kathleen Price, Adina Rosenthal, Keith Moore, Sel Heidel, Rick Wardell, Victor Coleman. And of course, our current Minervals, Hugo Angiano, Tommy, Karen F, Gary F, and of course, my patron, my boss, <laughs> Thomas L. Sipple, and Robert Rossiti, Rick Potter, and John Fullerton. Now, some of those names might be uh, familiar to you. You might be one of those names, actually. If so, I hope you're listening today. That was who I listed as best friends. January 29th, 19, uh, 1989, Evie, 3.30 p.m. Preparing for Magic and Theory and Practice class, which starts next Thursday. Just completed a four-week class of Enochian. Went very well and allowed me to review material necessary to keep one jump ahead of the class. During this preparation, I've been thrown face-to-face -face with my own magical career, especially the 1 equals 10 and the 2 equals 9, and what I am doing to get on with it. This new record, 
I have started not to record my conclusions, but my lack of conclusions. And to record the fact that I am again consciously seeking initiation. February 2nd, 7 p.m. Preparation for Magic and Theory and Practice class. Rubs my nose in the new basics. Jean-Paul comes to class and is friends with the, the new Minervals. I soaked my sore back in the jacuzzi. Ate moderately, had a small glass of wine. February 10th. Now this will this will mean more to uh, OTO uh, initiates, but there's nothing I can't share here. Uh, 3 p.m. HB called. That's the head of the order to discuss administrating administering the elixir of life. The member husband of a critically ill member of the, then he gave the name of the lodge, has appealed to the 10th degree for permission for the elixir to be administered. As stated in the Blue Equinox OTO material, he consented. My thoughts, which I expressed to him, were, it states in the Mass, the hosts or cakes of light from the Mass can be reserved for the sick in their homes. He asked if Constance and I would celebrate Mass and forward a consecrated uh, cake of light as the medium of the elixir. I told him we would this weekend. February 11th. 1989, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. How to survive a Masonic conversation class. And the Master Mason raising ceremony or, or a, a, a read through from uh, uh, Duncan's ritual is what it was. And we, uh, we ran through, demonstrated Brother Gary Lucas. We didn't raise him a ma we were just, just the class was how to survive a ma Masonic conversation. Uh, February 12th, Sunday, 11 a.m. Mass, full dress with Jean Paul, our son. Jean Paul is our deacon. I believe he was 17 years old and had probably just. Uh, maybe 18, just received his Minerva, I think, too. Even though we ordained him several years ago, this is the first occasion he served an excellent job. Jean-Paul, do you remember that? Okay. March 18th. San Francisco, California, Sheraton Hotel, Fisherman's Wharf. 12 p.m. meeting of the Grand Tribunal. Uh, routine business. Meeting of the Supreme Council, HB and I, uh, requested that uh, the two individuals go on to take their six degrees and uh, uh, later their seventh to uh, help fill the Supreme Grand Council. Okay. Later that day, 3 p.m., Phyllis Seckler party to celebrate her 50th year in the OTO. Champagne, cake, stories, presents. HB, me, Heydrich, Jimmy, Lola, Catlin, Steve Abbott, Rusty Spore, Lon Davis, Bob Stein, Jim Grabe, Lucia, and Tony.
and every name I run across triggers another glorious connection to a wonderful individual. 5 p.m. meeting of the secret Areopagus of the eighth degree. Um, and I won't need to share uh, that because it's rather boring anyway. Um, 5 p.m. Oakland, California. I officiated at five Bay Area fifth degree initiations. And then I give the officers, most wise sovereign me, High Priestess Lucia, uh, Grand Marshal Rusty Spohr, introducer Steve Abbott. Went well. Okay, all of that, of course, was at HP's request. March 23rd. Monday, Thursday. 3 p.m. Call from HB, I mean it's beta, to inform me that brother Richard Gurnan was dead. Requested we do mass. 11 p.m. Toasted Richard Gordon, uh, Gordon, excuse me, Richard Gurnan at Troa class. Small Requiem Mass scheduled for tomorrow night. The next day, Mass for Brother Richard, Constance, and me. Leroy Lauer was the deacon. Steve Abbott and Jean-Paul were the congregation. Very strong Mass, no pretense. So that was how we spent Monday, Thursday, and the day after Monday, Thursday, back in 1989. The next section of the diary simply says, our trip to England and Wales. I don't know whether I'm going to bore you with continuing with my 1989 diary tomorrow but we'll have we'll have to see uh, tomorrow is is good friday now uh, in our past if i would look at other other diaries i'm sure i would find uh many years of good fridays where constance and i celebrated gnostic mass uh not so much in celebration or or uh uh, commemoration of the Christian holiday of Good Friday, but because of the esoteric Wagnerian significance of Good Friday vis-a-vis -vis the Holy Guardian Angel. Uh, so we usually uh, uh, tried to celebrate uh, Gnostic Mass on Good Friday our mass music, of course, was Wagner's Good Friday Spell. And uh, quite frankly, they were always, at least from my point of view, my nostalgic point of view, very ecstatic masses. Anyway, that's it for Monday, Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow for Good Friday. And don't forget, we're right in the middle of Thelemic Holy Season coming up on the writing of the Book of the Law. And uh, either tomorrow or shortly, I'll jump back into the equinox of the gods and uh, jump on the momentum of the High Holy Days of Thelema. Until then, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Start your diary or pull out pull out your old diary and continue. Share it with all of us if you want. <laughs> In one way, me being with you every morning 
seven days a week for the last over three years is sort of my diary now. You can review it at any time you want. Uh, if you can't find it on my Facebook page here, just go to YouTube. Anyway, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is a law. Love under will.